with another nail tutorial and today my client drove all the way from Buckhead, Georgia and I live in Fayetteville so that's about an hour drive. So happy birthday to her because I really appreciate her for coming all the way out here. As you guys can see at the moment I'm starting to remove the shine off of her natural nails. I am using a 180 grit sanding band to do this and I do this on a very low speed. Moving on, I am starting to glue the nail tips down to the natural nails. I actually just place a little tiny bit of this one second nail glue down to the nail and then I glue the nail tip on. And y'all, this nail glue does dry in a second. Today my client's going to be getting some long slash XL nails. She didn't want to do XL but she also didn't want to do just regular long length. So I am currently cutting them down and afterwards I'm going to go back in with that 180 grit sanding band and start to blend the natural nail in with the nail tip. Nail tips that I'm using today are some non C curve coffin nail tips. I am going to start to blend them in with the natural nail so I'm just doing very very light motions going across the entire nail. And I do like to file the entire nail to get it white just in case I want to take some pictures. It's just much easier to see than the clear nail tip. These nail tips are already pre-shaped but I do want to make sure that there's no nail tip on the side sticking out. So I am going in with this 100 grit hand file and I'm just going to lightly file the side walls to make sure that it's nice and snugged near where I place the nail tip. And I'm also going to make sure that the bottom of the nail is straight. When I'm finished doing this, I will be going in with an alcohol pad to remove all of the dust off the nails and dehydrate. I like to use those alcohol pads because it's like a two-in-one. Afterwards, as you guys can see, I did go in with this Young Nails Protein Bond. And I'm also going to go in with one coat of my No Lift Primer. I love this combination. Now, when I posted this combo on Instagram, somebody has said that the Young Nails Protein Bond does not work with all primers. I told her that I personally could not confirm this because I actually never used the Young Nails Protein Bond with any other primers. So that's just what I like to use. Y'all can let me know down below if that's true. Because like I said, I personally would not know. Moving on, let's get into the application. We are going to be using some acrylic powder from Chisel today, of course. And I did place a very small bead of clear acrylic to the natural nail before starting. So I wanted to do another try ombre set because it's been a minute since I've did one of these on a client because this does take a little longer. So I placed my first bead on the free edge of the nail and I made sure that all the acrylic was sidewall to sidewall. As you guys can see now, I am wiping the sidewalls of the nail tip to make sure that the acrylic is nice and snugged. For this next bead, we're going to be using some yellow acrylic powder. This is also from Chisel, and I did place this bead higher. Now, I could have picked up a smaller bead. You guys are going to see when I start to blend this down, the blend did come down a little lower than I wanted it to. So I am going to go in with some acrylic powder towards the free edge, just a little bit, a little bit of orange, and I'm going to start to blend this upwards. Also, I know that my nails look absolutely ridiculous. I did try dual forms of poly gel and it was a very funny experience. I do plan on posting the video this week or next week. It was hilarious because I just thought I was going to jump into it and just be a pro. But I ended up, they were okay. They weren't too bad. They were all right. As you guys can see, I did take them off because I was like, all right, I'm not wearing these because I was going to wear them, but I just, mm-mm. But y'all going to see how those turn out in another video. 
I did also draw some black Frenchies before doing her nails today. So if I got black and white paint on my hands or near my nails, please don't think my hands is dirty while I'm working with my clients. I know how people could be. So I did just want to let y'all know my nails is looking a little crazy today. The nude acrylic I'm using today is Bad and Bougie from Valentino. Y'all, I've told y'all I was in love with this acrylic powder. I definitely recommend getting it. The consistency is really nice. It does dry a little bit faster, I feel like, but it's really good. I'm currently making sure that the entire nail is smooth, just going back and cleaning up those side walls. Later on, we do not want to have to spend too much time shaping these nails, and I am going to give you guys a close-up so y'all can see that cuticle application. Y'all, when I was working on this set today, this was a freestyle. I'm talking, I had no idea what we were doing. She just picked the colors and we started to move. So I did skip the ring finger and the pointer finger because I was not too sure at the moment if I wanted to do a plain nail or if I wanted to just keep the entire set the same thing with this tri ombre. So far, that pinky nail over there in the corner is looking really, really good. I am going to lightly encapsulate it later just to protect the ombre design. The nail really doesn't need too, too much thickness. As you guys can see, it is already pretty thick for the most part. I probably would just add a small bead in the apex area to make sure we have that secureness and that these don't break since they are a little longer. Just like on the pinky nail, I did bring this way too far down, actually much further down than I did on the pinky. So I am gonna go in with another bead of the orange acrylic powder, just a very small bead, and I'm gonna start to blend it up. Now, after blending it up, I did start to bring it down. So you guys see that really harsh line. So because of this, I am gonna go in with one more bead of the orange acrylic to make sure that we don't see that line that's right there. I'm also not going to apply too much pressure. I'm just going to start to lightly, very lightly blend it up and clean the sidewalls. And I'm going to make sure I allow this to dry because I need this to stay looking exactly like this. So with that nude acrylic powder, I am going to place it directly on top of the yellow. I'm going to make sure it's sidewall to sidewall, and then I'm going to start to lightly blend this down. Now y'all see, this bead was not as large as the bead I used on the pinky nail, so the ombre did not come down as far as it did on the pinky, which is perfectly fine. Going back to the pinky nail, I am going to encapsulate the nails in clear very lightly. I did tell you guys earlier that I did feel like the nails were already a good thickness for the most part, but I do want to make sure that I go back and protect my design.
So since we're all here, I did want to ask you guys, what do you feel like the hardest thing is as a nail tech? Do you feel like it's building clientele? Do you feel like it's getting the hang of different shapes, different nail beds? What do you feel like is the hardest? Because when I first started doing nails, larger nail beds were so complicated for me. Like I didn't know what the issue was. For my clients that do have larger nail beds, me personally, I like to use pre-shaped nail tips that makes everything 10 times easier because the nail tips are already shaped so you don't have to worry about trying to get all the nails to be super perfect. So don't stress and just let the nail tips do the work for you. So I definitely recommend that if that was a problem for you too because I know it was for me. But like I said, let me know down below what was something that you feel like is extremely hard. It does not have to be actually doing the nails itself. It could be something that's business-wise, like I said, building clientele or even growing your Instagram page. So I did leave the application in real time so that you guys could see every little thing that I was doing. I was running low on my clear acrylic powder, so that's why you guys see me removing chunks of acrylic from the application. But we are going to move on and start to file down these nails. The drill bit I'm using today is currently my favorite drill bit for debulking nails and making sure that I seal the cuticles properly. I used to use a safety bit. But I do feel like the bits without the safety part get much closer to the cuticle area. You'll just have to get comfortable with getting that close to the skin with this bit. Now, everybody has different methods. But me personally, I like to seal the cuticle area first and start to debulk the nail before I start to shape the nail. Now, this is just me. Some people like to shape the nail and then go in and do all the extra filing they need to do. But me personally, I do like to seal the cuticle area first. That's what I'm doing here. I am getting as close to the skin as possible. And I'm also going to start to debulk the nail if I feel like it's too thick. Now, the free edge of the nail was a little thick due to me adding that acrylic powder trying to blend that ombre up. So I am going to have to go down to the free edge and start to file that down as well. For debulking and sealing the cuticle area, I like to file going side to side. So I personally start from the right side and then go to the left. For the body of the nail, I file down and across. Also on the free edge too, but I am going to go to the free edge and go from right to left as well. So just remember the free edge and the cuticle area right to left and the body of the nail down and across. Now there are some times where I'll go in with my bit and go down and across as if it was the body of the nail on the free edge but only if it's crazy crazy thick and nine times out of ten i'm not going to place that much acrylic on the free edge but like i said we were trying to fix the blend earlier so that's why the free edge was a little thick today moving on i will be using this 80 grit hand file to start to file the surface of the nails i like to do this to get the nails extra smooth and i'm just going to go across the entire nail not really too much in the cuticle area or on the apex area because that's already smooth. But for the body of the nail, I do like to do this. When I was finished filing and buffing her nails, I did have her go wash her hands. And when she came back, she was telling me how much she loved the sleekness of them and how they were not too thick, which I felt really good about that. Because y'all know I used to make my nails way too thick. They would be pretty, but girl, that apex was high up. So I'm happy that I was able to fix that. And I'm happy that she liked her nails. I know a lot of people don't like to talk to their clients or they struggle with talking to new people, but I'm absolutely positive that me talking and connecting with my clients is the reason I'm able to consistently have full clientele and get booked. When I have a new client, I start off with really, really simple questions like where you from, was the drive far, how was the traffic? Do you got any kids? Like, I'll just ask them anything just to kind of break the ice and see what their vibe is. Now, if there's somebody that I don't really like to talk, just going based off of these questions, I'll know. Because if they're giving me one word responses, they really don't seem too interested, then I'll be quiet. But if they start talking and asking me questions, now we can start to form a bond and we're not just sitting there and I'm doing your nails and we're kind of in each other's face. 
So me personally, I do like to talk to my clients just to make sure that they're comfortable and you could use this as a time to get to know her a little more and also get to know a little more about her previous experiences with getting their nails done. The client I'm working on today normally goes to traditional salons, but since it was her birthday, she did want to try something different. So I'm very grateful that she chose me to be her first private nail technician. Now, I did ask her who she was going to prior to me. I just asked this because I'd be wanting to know if they were going to a private nail tech or if they were going to a salon. It's just some good information to know. And like I said, I need my clients to open up to me when I'm working with them so that I can ensure a really smooth appointment and we can build some type of relationship. I am continuing to file the surface of the nails. I do make sure I go over the entire nail, get the side walls and everything because I do need these nails to be really smooth. And her middle finger was actually a very, very funny shape from the side wall. So I did have to fix that nail. So I did spend a little more time on the middle finger because when I did the tri ombre, the application came out so ugly, y'all. I don't know if y'all seen it when I turned the finger to the side, but it was looking funny. So I did have to go and fix it. Last thing that I'll be doing before we add these flowers and these pixie crystals is buffing the nails. We do this to get all those little fine scratches out and we want to make sure that these nails are smooth. Me personally, I like to use a 80 grit buffer. I do get them from my local nail supply store, but I actually got the one that I'm using currently from Amazon on like some, it was real last minute. I wasn't able to go to the store, but I am going across the entire nail and I'm gonna have her go wash her hands with a scrub brush really quickly before we move on so we can get all of that dust off. So I wanted to do something a little different today. Y'all, this came out super cute. I'm going to use this bling gel from McCart and I'm going to place it on the free edge. And I'm going to start to blend this up. Now, as y'all can see, I used a lot of the bling gel. I do this because I really need those pixie crystals to sit on top of the nail and not move. Part of the nail that does not have any diamond gel on it, I am going to apply some top coat. Now, I'm not going to top coat the entire nail. Like I said, I'm not going to put the top coat on top of the diamond gel. I just need to make sure that I could top coat this nail now because when I got those pixie crystals on there, it may be a little harder. Now it is springtime, so I did want to incorporate some flowers. So I am finally able to use these yellow flowers I got from Amazon a very long time ago. And I'm pressing them down into that diamond gel. Like I'm really applying a pressure. I'll also be applying some crystals to the gel as well. Like I said, you will want to press these down a little bit. Make sure that those stones are in there. And then I'm going to get my pixie crystals and start to sprinkle them very lightly towards the bottom. And for the most part, I do remember where I have the diamond gel. And I'm trying my best to only apply it to where the diamond gel is, not the top coat. So when I was finished, I did have my client put her hands in the lamp and I did allow it to cure for 60 seconds as I moved on to the next hand. And right now I am using my Zule bling glue to glue these stones on. I do not normally use the McCart Diamond Gel for my flat back stones, really only for pixie crystals or any type of raw glitter.
So I'll be doing the same design on the pinky and I was going to do this design on the thumb but I kind of did not want the pixie crystals to be in her way at all. But just like before I'm only applying that top coat to the top of the nail. I'm going to press these flowers and these rhinestones into the gel and then start to lightly sprinkle those pixie crystals on top. I was extremely satisfied with how this freestyle came out. I told y'all earlier, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what we were going to do for the nails. I just knew it was her birthday. And I knew we had orange and yellow to work with. So when I'm freestyling, I do ask my client what they like and what they don't like. I also ask them what colors they don't like. So I'm aware of what not to do. These flowers did also come with tiny caviar beads. They were gold and I did place them in the center of the flowers. For that, I did use the Zule Bling Glue again, and I placed it under and on top of the caviar beads to make sure that none of the beads move from the center of the flower. After this, I'm going to be doing one more design on the thumb, kind of similar to the ring finger, just a little bit, but not really. And I'm going to let y'all see how they came out when everything was completely top coated. I love how they came out. I feel like it was the perfect mix between springtime is approaching and my birthday is here. So y'all can let me know down below how y'all feel about these. And y'all could also let me know how much y'all think I charge for these nails. Because these were some money now. We definitely went crazy for this set. But if y'all enjoyed this video, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And also let me know what y'all would like to see next that's not acrylic powder. I've been reading that you guys want more poly gel videos, so let me know down below.